Hello, everyone. I want to welcome you to the Laporte First United Methodist Church, uh, whether you're at home or whether you're here for our Ash Wednesday service. And so um, each of you should have been mailed a packet of ashes that were from actually the burning of last year's Palm Sunday palm branches. So I burned these down, and that's what creates the ashes uh, for us to use for Ash Wednesday. And so I want to thank you uh, for being here um, today and watching from home. And so I want to begin with a word of prayer. Please bow your heads and hearts with me. Lord, Holy One, have mercy on us. We confess our sins to you. We have fallen short of your glory, and without your mercy and grace, we would simply be dust. Lord, we repent today as we entered into this Lenten season. Be near to us. Help us by your Holy Spirit to feel conviction and to repent of our sins. Help us by your Spirit to have strength to overcome the enemy. Bless us this day as we meet at the beginning of our 40 days of Lenten season going to Easter. Amen. Our opening hymn is Be Still My Soul. It's found on page 534. The words are on the screen. Uh, let's sing it together. Be Still My Soul, 534. <laughs> Be still, my soul, the Lord is on your side. Bear patiently the cross of grief or pain. Leave to your God to order and provide. In every change, God faithful will remain. Be still, my soul, your best, your heavenly friend. Through thorny ways leads to a joyful Still, my soul, your God will undertake to guide the future as ages pass. Your hope, your confidence, let nothing shake. All now mysterious shall be bright at last. Be still, my soul, the waves and winds still know. The Christ who ruled them while he dealt below. Be still, my soul, the hour is hastening on, when we shall be forever with the Lord. When disappointment, grief, and fear are gone, Restored. Be still, my soul, when change and tears are past. All safe and blessed we shall meet at last. And if Carrie would come up and help with the responsive reading.
I lift my eyes up to the hills. From whence does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, who made heaven and earth. The Lord will not let your foot be moved. The Lord who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, the one who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade on your right hand. The sun shall not smite you by day. Nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all evil and will keep your life. The Lord will keep your going out and your coming in from this time forth and forevermore. We will now have a special song by the praise team titled Cornerstone, and then Lexi will read the scripture for this evening. Oh 
to read for you um, Joel 1 through 2 and then 12 through 17. Blow the trumpet in Zion and sound the alarm on my holy hill. Let all who live in the land tremble, for the day of the Lord is coming. It is close at hand, a day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and blackness. Like a dawn spreading across the mountains, a large and mighty army comes, such as never was in ancient times, nor ever will be in ancient ages to come. Even now, declares the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting and weeping and mourning. Rend your heart and not your garments. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and abounding in love, and he relents from sending calamity. Who knows? He may turn and relent and leave behind a blessing, grain offerings and drink offerings for the Lord your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion, declare a holy fast, and call a sacred assembly. Gather the people, consecrate the assembly, and bring together the elders, gather the children, those nursing at the breast, and let the bridegroom leave his room and the bride her chamber. Let the priests who minister before the Lord weep between the portico and the altar, and let them say, Spare your people, Lord. Do not make your inheritance an object of scorn, a byword among the nations, why should they say among these pe the peoples, where is their God? Thank you. Ash Wednesday is a holy day within the Christian tradition to commemorate the beginning of 40 days of personal sacrifice for the individual Christian, leading to Easter, which is called the season of Lent. When movie actor and producer Mel Gibson, Gibson released the epic blockbuster movie, The Passion of Christ, he did so on Ash Wednesday, 2004. Suddenly, many evangelical Protestants woke up to what Ash Wednesday was and its significance. Since then, Ash Wednesday was brought to a new level of consciousness in the minds of many Christians beside Catholics. Perhaps you have seen a person in the spring of the year go to work or in a public place with a black cross embolized across their forehead. When I see this, I think to myself, what a powerful public witness. Many of us may not have really given much thought to Ash Wednesday, except to learn that it is the first 40 days before Easter. These 40 days do not include Sundays because Sunday is the celebration of the resurrection. When early Christians extended a call for prayer for fasting for 40 days to consider Christ a torning sacrifice for our sins upon the cross, Sunday celebrations, the day Christ arose, was not a part of Lent. So... Four days this week, counting today, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, which equal four days, plus six weeks of six days before Easter Sunday is four plus 36, which equals 40 days. For 10 centuries, Christians around the world have honored Ash Wednesday, the first day of Lent. So as we come together today to do the same, we're now part of that long procession of Christians who have stopped their lives to commemorate and kick off 40 days that anticipate Good Friday and Easter. Nowhere in the Bible are we commanded to observe Ash Wednesday as a holy day, nor are we commanded to observe Christmas or Easter as holy days. Yet as Christians, disciples, and followers of Christ, we choose to stop and to consider Jesus' ownership of our lives and how we can draw closer to the heart of God. Coming here to deliver your soul to God can only enrich and inspire you to live for Christ deeper. There is nothing in the evening news or TV shows that you're missing tonight that could add, or add to the inner peace and strength that God will give you by worshiping here in the spirit and in truth. Even if you are at home and not at church during 
the coronavirus pandemic, God will draw close to you. In the Old Testament times, in the earliest centuries of the Christian faith, Christians who repented of their sin had ashes sprinkled on their bodies as a sign of repentance. Even as Job repented in dust and ashes in Job 42.6, this is where we get the term sackcloth and ashes. Ashes were everywhere at that time. They cooked with wood. They heated themselves with wood. They made metal tools with burning wood. So the black dirtiness of ash was all around them. The sackcloth was a rough and itchy clothing material to wear. The sackcloth symbolized the uncomfortable nature of sin, and the ashes reminded us of the dirtiness of sin. Around the 10th century A.D., all believers showed their need for repentance by having ashes placed on their forehead in the shape of a cross. It would be, of course, the Catholic Church that kept this tradition alive for the past thousand years. As Protestants, perhaps we've been too quick to cast off the Ash Wednesday tradition because we are wary of how easily rituals can become works that people misinterpret as steps towards salvation. How do we observe Ash Wednesday? Of course, we've talked about the ashes on the forehead to indicate that we're sinners in need of grace. However, we haven't mentioned the words repeated by what is called the imposition of the ashes. The words actually come from Genesis chapter 3, verse 19. And here's what it says. You are dust, and to dust you will return. I say this phrase every time I do a funeral. Humbling words to make you think of the brevity of your life, your purpose. You're here to glorify to God your life. In the 90th Psalm, the one Moses wrote, we find the words, so teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. So coming here should teach us to catch a glimpse of life for what it really is. Like granulated sands dropping through an hourglass, our lives are fleeting. Compared to the expanse of both history and future eternity in heaven. Today I will put ashes or impose the ashes that were burned from the palm leaves from last year's Palm Sunday service. I will place the symbol of the cross on your forehead or the back of your hand to remember the price Christ paid for our sins by dying on a cruel Roman cross. What spiritual value does Ash Wednesday have for us? What thoughts should you be thinking right now? Think of the reality that God created us so uniquely that no two people in the world have the same fingerprint. We are all different, yet God loves us as unique individuals. As individuals who have free will to choose good or evil, all of us have sinned against the very one who gave us life. The Bible says that all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. There is not a person listening to my voice today that is without sin. But the scripture goes on to say that God has given us an escape plan, a plan called salvation from our sins. The Roman passage goes on to say that even though we have sin, all of us are justified. That word justified is a legal term that says you are made right, pardoned, as if you had never sinned by his grace through redemption that came by Jesus Christ. This is a free gift from God in Jesus Christ. Will you accept it today? Even if we die and all turn into dust, our spirits live into eternity in heaven. So the conclusion is that every time we bring ourselves into the presence of God, we are preparing ourselves for physical death and for spiritual life of our souls. Did you know that you are today one day closer to all that God would have you be in heaven? You are. Every day, you draw closer to the time that God will call you home. And to dust you came, to dust you will return. Sunday by Sunday, we come together to study God's word, to learn to live in a way that prepares us to live both here and in heaven one day. If we take it seriously, we will find heaven drawing closer and closer to our lives here on earth. How does that happen? The Holy Spirit keeps placing more of the delights of heaven into your soul. 
as we surrender every area of our lives to the Lord. In fact, the Bible said the Spirit is God's guarantee that he will give us the inheritance he promised and that he has purchased to us to be his own people. Ephesians 1.14 Death is one of the inescapable facts of life for everyone. The reality is, as each person is destined to die once, after that comes the judgment. Hebrews 9.27 We need to tell people that Christ is in us and is our hope of glory, that we're forgiven sinners who live in this assurance of heaven. It's a fact that we face no judgment for the sin at death that brings us to the presence of God today. I will say two messages to you as I place the ashes on your forehead or your hand. From dust you came, to dust you will return one day. And the second, your sins are forgiven in Jesus' name. One is the reality of death, the second the reality of new life in Christ. This is the gospel. This is the good news. We are all going to die, but because our sins are forgiven and because we are an Easter people, we know that eternity in heaven awaits us. You are but dust, and dust you shall return. The emotional result of this kind of thinking should not be depression or gloom. It's gratitude. For each day of life God gives us, every minute is precious when we realize how desperately we need God and how faithful God is to deliver us from all our fears, even fear of death. We can't help but offer our lives as a living sacrifice. When we come to grips with the shortness of our lives, we'll all want to do as much good as we can. Let us pray. Lord, thank you that Easter is coming, death has no sting, no victory. Because of Jesus, glory and honor and praise to his name, thank you for rescuing us. Help us to keep both the weight and the joy of this season in our hearts as we move through the next several weeks leading to Easter. Help us to bear the good fruit of your spirit. Thank you that the ashes on our forehead do not symbolize our ultimate reality. From dust we might have been formed, but our bodies, our spirit, ourselves await a beautiful redemption and the restoration of all things in heaven. How long we await for that day. Let it come quickly, Lord Jesus. Amen. The ashes that I have prepared... are in this little bowl, and I would like to pray over them. Almighty God, you have created us out of the dust of the earth. Grant that these ashes may be a sign of your mortality and penance, so that we may remember that only by your gracious gift we are giving everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Now, those of you that are at home, you were given or mailed to your house a little packet with the ashes. So I have blessed the ashes before I mailed them out. So you may dip your finger and you may place the cross to begin your journey through Lent. This is a time of sacrifice for you. This is a time of being thankful for the sacrifice that God has done for you. This is why certain people say, Lord, I give up this in my life as a reminder of what you gave up for me. This is also why some people during this 40 days of Lent also add something to their plate. They say, I'm going to read more scripture. I'm going to give more to charities. I'm going to take my time and work in a soup kitchen or, or do something. So you're either giving something up or you're adding something to your plate. So at this time, Peter, if you could play some music and those that would like to come forward and have their ashes put on their hand or forehead, you are welcome to do so at this time. And you that are at home, you can do that now. And I really only need to do a couple of you for sake of the recording. So if you come at this time. From dust you came, from dust you return. Your sins are forgiven in Jesus' name. God bless you.
the dust you came, to the dust you return. Your sins are forgiven in Jesus' name. God bless you. Lexi, from dust you came, to the dust you return. Your sins are forgiven in Jesus' name. God bless you. For those of you that are at home, thank you for participating. I want to encourage you to give something up, to read more, to perhaps read your Bible every day for the next 40 days leading to Easter. And so we begin the season of Lent. Our hymn of response is Be Thou My Vision on page 451. Let's sing it together. The words are also on the screen. and keep you both here at the church and at home. May God bless us all as we journey together during this Lenten season leading to Easter. May it be a time that we draw close to you and you draw close to us. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless. Thank you. <laughs>